Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the topic measurement of Eon linear density. In last class, we have discussed the various linear density expression systems like Tex, English count, metric count. Also, we have seen the how to convert one count system to other system. We have also seen the relationship between one counting system to other system. Also, we have discussed the count system how to get the resultant count. So, the resultant count for say direct system and indirect system. Here if we see we have discussed the direct system indirect system the resultant count are calculated based on the reciprocal of individual E n count. This was the system we have discussed and for direct system the resultant count were calculated by simply adding the component yarns count. And also we have discussed different problem practical problem and how to calculate the resultant counts. So, here we have seen say 3 ply of yarn of same English count how to convert it to 3 ply folded yarn count in tech system. So, if we ply 3 50s any count and ultimately we have seen the resultant count will be 35.42. Similarly, we have seen in direct system suppose 36 filaments were there of 3 denier each monofilament and we have seen the text count was 12 text. Okay. In another problem which was and practically practical in industry we face this type of problem where say 3 ply yarn of different types of yarn express in different system. So, in convention we have seen in state yarn is expressed in terms of n a metric count in the industry itself and polyester filament it is expressed in denier and cotton yarn it is expressed in any any or n t. Okay. Here it is a any. So, here the idea was if we want to calculate the resultant count first thing was that we have to convert the individual count to a, a single counting system and best idea is to convert into a direct system. So, here as direct system takes was there and we required in terms of text. So, we have converted all these counts into Tech system. Okay. So, 20 so that means 50 NEM yarn metric count yarn has become 20 tex and 100 denier yarn has become 11.11 tex and 60 N yarn became 9.83 tex. Then simply we have added and this was the resultant count that is 40.94 tex. Now, we will start how to measure. So, we will discuss different ways of measurement, different methods of measurement of Eon linear density. So, to measure the linear density there are two basic requirements for determining the Eon count. So, why do we need to know the Eon count? It is that an accurate value of the sample length. 
So, if we have known mass, we have seen earlier, if we have known mass, so we need to know the actual sample length, actual length of the day and that is actually required for many applications. And an accurate value of its accurate value of its mass, the accurate length of this mass, okay, of this its mass. Okay. So, what is the actual length of the particular mass of the day? So, if we know the length of the yarn, what is the actual mass of this yarn? Okay. The yarns are available. So, for measuring count, the yarns are available in two forms. One is a continuous form, another is in cut form, small length. Okay. So, in package form, where we the longer lengths are available. So, in suppose in bobbin form, where we have longer length. Okay and in cone or cheese form. So, a longer continuous lengths are available, but and in that this case we have we can measure the count in by using different measuring technique, but there are other situations where we do not have the package. We have small cut length and we would like to know measure the yarn count in short or cut form, suppose we have a piece of fabric and we need to measure the yarn count. Okay. So, there are various systems, so we will discuss one by one. So, yarn in package form, so continuous package form, so we have lo longer length yarn of yarn available. When the yarn is in package form such as ring bobbin or cone, it is usual to wind a number of skeins of by means of wrap reel. So, number of hangs, number of leaves continuously of certain length by using wrap reel, if you want to measure the count. So, this is a wrap reel. Okay. This wrap reel it is a simple machine which consists of a reel. Okay. There is a it is a reel a yarn package this is the yarn package it is a bobbin ring bobbin is there yarn package okay. and package creel is there the package creel will be there that this machine this instrument has got this is the reel on which we wrap the yarn, the creel where we place the package may be in the form of cone or in the form of bobbin ring bobbin, a yarn guide system this is a yarn guide system and this guide system has got little travers it moves sideways little bit, gradually it moves. So, that the idea here is that the yarn while wrapping that the length of the every wrap, length of every wrap should be almost same. If there is no traverse, the problem would be that that thickness of the particular place will keep on increasing because yarn when will be wrapped over the earlier layer. So, in that way yarn layer will increase. So, we will not get the actual length of the yarn. Our idea is to get the actual length of the yarn. So, in that case if the traverse is not there we will get the total different length the higher length we will get. A length indicator is there. Now, here length indicator does not actually measure the length of yarn which is being unwound. It measures, it is measured by the number of rotation of this wrap reel. So, if the wrap reel it, it has got a fixed circumference, the circumference of wrap reel is say 1.5 yard. 
Okay. So, a Lee of say 120 yard requires say 80 such turn. Okay. So, after say 80 turn there will be one indicator. Okay. So, th there will be one indicator. So, warning bell will be there and that immediately the this we have to stop the winding or in automatic machine it will automatically get stopped. So, after say 80 yard 80 turn. So, 120 yard if it is yarn is known um, required. So, 80 turn will be required. Now, if we do not have the traverse then the problem would be that even after 80 turn we will not have 120 yard it will be little bit more than 120 yard and when we will take the mass of that yarn then we will get the wrong result. Okay. So, that is why it is very and we have to we, we have to take care that proper traversing is there or not is there any jamming in traversing system or not that we have to take care. And also the traversing another advantage of traversing is that we have to while taking out the lee from the wrap reel the if it is the the yarns are wrapped one over other it is a thick wrap thick lee thickness of the wrap is more in that case uh, taking out of uh, lee will be difficult. Now, for cotton yarn the reel has a girth of that is circumference this reel has circumference of 54 inch that is 1.25 yards. Okay. So, that 80 revolution of the re will have as skein of 120 yards. So, 120 yard is normally termed as a lee. Okay. So, 80 turn is there. So, we have got 120 yard. Now, the same lee we will have we can just take the mass of that lee. So, mass of that lee we will get by electronic balance and simply we can calculate the count system and the using the earlier formula if we know the length of the yarn 120 yard and if we take the mass so 0.54 multiplied by length in yard 120 and divided by mass in gram. So, the yarn counter counting measurement system so, there are in electronic balances they are direct yarn count system. So, in that system in that particular instrument the programming is there the program is in such a fashion that it is actually you have to feed the length unit how much yarn is there in the lead. So, if you feed 120 yard and that will use this simple formula and directly give the yarn count in English count or may be in text count. So, only thing you have to make prepare a lee and just put and keep on putting the different lee it will give the mean count individual yarn count it will it can calculate the standard deviation it can calculate the C V percent and it is linked to its computer and we can simply take the reading okay, take the print out. So, with using this is not fully automatic this is actually you have to take the lee and the you have to put on the electronic balance okay and this wrap reel it is we it can be manual or it can be motor operated okay so after uh, having say 80 turn automatically it will stop so this is the first system um, that is a um, uh, it's a ele using electronic balance one can manually measure or this uh, type of instruments are available. Second system where we use the wrap reel, wrap reel is used to prepare the lee okay. and a Knowles balance is there. This is the this balance is a special balance it is called Knowles balance here we can directly read the count system. Okay. And one should 
uh, be aware that nowadays we do not use this system in industry, because the automatically actual electronic system is available, computer controlled system is available, directly we can get count, but in early days we this Knowles balance was very helpful to get the direct yarn count system. Now, here the a beam balance system is used ok. Behind which this is the beam balance system normally balance uh, system is there ok. And behind which a separate rod of hexagonal section. So, uh, hex one hexagonal section I can show you this one is a it is a hexagonal section ok. In the hexagonal section ok is fixed where out of 6 sides of hexagon 5 sides are actually indicated with the different count range ok. So, out of 6 with the 5 of the faces lettered A to E. So, there are you can rotate this 5 faces. So, A B C D E 5 faces depending on the count range. Suppose, A section is count range in the coarser section ok. Maybe say so particularly say uh, 1 to 5. So, different count systems are there ok. At, uh, one only, only in cotton system different count ranges are there ok. So, and say A being the coarser side and B is little bit finer range in this way E is the finest count range in that way at different range it is a gauged it is actually marked at different count and engraved with the count scale ok to cover the certain range. So, certain range is covered in the left hand of the pen. So, the left hand pen here ok a letter lettered weight. So, there are mass different weights are there ok. So, 5 such weights will be available A, B, C, D, E ok. So, when we will and if we know the typical count suppose we know a yarn it is around range of 50s. So, we will place that particular side we will rotate that side and place that rotate this hexagonal rod and place particular side. Suppose, it is a C for that particular count range we know the nominal count range ok. That count range we are placing the that side and say C side and corresponding to that side the C weight we have to place here in the left pan ok. And left hand pan lettered weight is placed and on the beam again a small lettered rider will be there. So, there will be different rider of different letter ok. For A it will be A rider B there will be B rider like that ok. Suppose a cotton yarn is to be tested and its nominal count its expected count is 36 count ok. So, in that case for 36 count range it is comes it comes out to be B. Phase B of the scale is turned to the front weight B is placed on the left hand pan and the rider B is put on the beam. So, on the beam we have to put the rider. So, this is the here there will be rider we have we have to put on the beam. So, a rider is there and the rider has to be shifted ok just to balance ok. So, the rider B put on the beam now position of the rider to be adjusted until the beam is balanced with the skin of cotton yarn. Cotton yarn is put on the right side and there will be little bit unbalance. If it is unbalanced, so that we have to shift the rider 
either left side or right side. So, to balance the yarn count and then we can read the yarn count directly from the scale. So, here if it is the that that is the range we expect suppose the yarn it is not coming to that range. So, we will then we have to shift if it is coarser or finer we will come to know if whether it is a coarser or finer in the accordingly we will shift to the other faces we will change the weight we will change the rider and in that way we will continue. This balance can also be designed with to suit the count system for other than cotton. Okay. So, one can always change the count system one can depending on the count system one can change the mass or weight or rider or the scaling. It is the best idea just to change the scale one can directly get. Okay. Another system is that it is called quadrant balance. The quadrant balance again we can get directly the count system. This this was used earlier now again it is not being used we earlier this the problem was that you have to take the length you have to calculate and then that is why the systems were evolved just to know the quickly know the count system. So, quadrant system is that here a given length is measured ok. Here typically it is a 120 yards for yarn and for for sliver there is specific length for roving there is a specific length. So, in this system we can measure for yarn for sliver or for roving ok specific lengths are there ok. So, for yarn suppose in yarn it is a 120 yard a given length is measured out by using the wrap reel. So, we can use either wrap reel or in wrap block we can use for sliver and roving. Okay. So, if it is yarn we use wrap reel then after measuring that specified length then it is suspended from the hook this is the hook. So, this is the yarn is specific length is measured using wrap reel or wrap block ok. Then it is suspended from the hook. So, this is the hook. So, we are suspending through the hook ok and specific mass is to balance here it is available here it is there ok and it works on a beam balancing system and the count is then read directly from the quadrant scale this is the quadrant scale ok. This one is the quadrant scale. So, once we put the yarn here this actually this needle will get deflected ok deflected. So, for a same length of yarn if the length is say it is a finer yarn if it is suppose here it has been deflected here. Now, if it is coarser yarn that means it will get deflected here. So, that means the counting system starts from this is showing finer yarn and then gradually it is becoming coarser. Here the idea is that we have to keep the length exactly fixed. Okay. So, that is a it is a simply by balancing system it is a versatile system okay, and this is actually we can do for yarn, for sliver, for um, roving and also if we can change the scale that scale we can just change in cotton system, for tech system, for many any other system we can do it. But in tech system in direct system if we want to do it will be on the reverse direction. Okay. It is 
So in cotton system, it's a and this, this that that way we can always change the scaling. Okay. So versatility of this system, okay, can be improved by engraving the scale with more than one series of values. So what we can do here, one thing is that we can change the versatility by scaling for yarn, sliver and the roving and also we can add keep on adding different scales for different count system. What takes for metric count we can do. For example, one scale may read from 0.1 to 1. So, we have say 3 scales, one scale for 0.1 to 1 to give the hank of 4 yards of sample of sliver. Okay. So, this is just for example, okay. we, if we know the range of the sliver, so it is assumed that its sliver count is 0.1 to 1, okay, hang 1 any. So, in that case and sli in for sliver we normally take it is a 4 yard, 4 yard for sample, for yarn we take 840 yards okay. and second scale this is first scale, second scale is for roving and it is gauged from 0.1 to 6 that is the range of the count, range of the hank of roving 0.1 to 6 and here the standard length is 20 yards of length sample length 20 yards of roving okay. and third one is for yarn say 4 count to 80 count and here 840 yards of sample. So, this 840 yard and it will give directly the yarn count. These scales are in the cotton count system. Okay. So, in quadrant balance it is normally in cotton count systems are available, but other quadrant balance are available for different range and different systems. So, different system if we need to get uh, the quadrant balance for directly for text we can always get. Okay. Now, the yarn count for short length. So, if suppose we have fabric, so we can get the yarn count. So, for that same precautions we have to take. So, determination of the count of yarn in fabric is usually made on comparatively short length okay, because the always it is a piece of fabrics are available most of the cases and also it is it is not possible to take out the longer length from the fabric. Okay. We cannot take 120 yards simply. So, after conditioning in the testing atmosphere say 24 hours typically two rectangular warp wave strip and five wave to wave strips are cut from each cloth from the cloth. So, why two only for warp? Because the warp actually during warping we warp from individual cone that means individual thread represents one different separate cone. So, in that case so two warp way strips will be enough to represent a number of threads number of different cones okay, enough thread and five it is required even more we may require because majority of the weft within that strip may be from single cone because it is a weft strip should be about 20 inch length. So, length of the strip should be around 20 inch and width 
is about that so that it allows 50 threads to be taken out. So, that we need to take around 50 threads. So, 20 inch length and 50 th of th 50 threads we should take. Okay. So, the difference between warp and waved specimen arises from the fact as I have discussed that 100 threads from 2 warp strips. Okay. That means, 100 one warp strip we are getting 50 threads. So, from 2 we are getting actually 100 threads that is equivalent to 100 warping package. Okay. So, 100 different warping package and from reasonable randomness. So, we are getting that means, if we take 2 strips that is equivalent to the yarns from 100 package with randomness okay, that is fairly random, but in wave to a it may represent only 2 to 3 different samples. So, that is why we need a wide range number larger number of samples. So, 100 versus 2. So, that means, here sample size is very narrow yarn removed from the fabric and then it may contain crimp. So, that means, we are not going to get actual length of the yarn. So, before we further proceed we must measure the crimp average crimp we, have, we must measure and suppose as we have seen it is a 20 inch length. So, actual length of fabric. So, actual length of yarn will be little bit more that yarn length we have to get actual yarn length by calculating the or by measuring the crimp and this correction by correct adding the multiplying the correction factor we can get the length of individual thread and then we can calculate the total actual length and here in this system we can use the micro balance electronic balance and we can take the mass we can measure the mass and we can calculate the count of the yarn. So, for both warp and waved because in waved normally waved direction crimp is high. So, in that case that we have to we must use the correction factor and this is the um, direct it is not automatic system it is not direct system we have to calculate the count of the yarn. So, the yarns are then weighed accurately to calculate the count. So, in this system we have to use the electronic balance okay. and here after that we have to manually calculate because we cannot have uh, program then in that case we have to program we have to feed the length. So, it is easy to calculate manually. Okay. So, 100 threads are there. So, 100 threads we know and we take the we can calculate the total length and we can take the mass okay. and this last process is that it is a Beasley balance. This balance here using small cut length we can measure the yarn count directly and also in this method we can get the count of or number of yarn or yarn linear density in different measuring systems used to directly read the count when the sample size is small. So, we can directly get the count of yarn. Okay. The instrument consists of a simple beam, this is a simple beam, it is again it works on beam balance principle and it is initially labeled. So, without any material or without anything it should be labeled okay. and 
when it is labeled this pointer actually the bring the pointer opposite to a datum line this is the datum line this is the initial line okay that that shows the instrument is balanced so without any material if the instrument is not balanced that means there is something wrong with them either with the leveling or with some that uh, there is in the pivot section this is the here in the pivot section there is some jamming so in this beam should be freely moving okay this it should be balanced if it is not balanced then this is the with this screw the balance system we can we can level okay now this is the larger view where this is the balance and data line is there and another this is separate one template will be given this template so that you have to cut the fabric of that length so small piece of fabric so this length this longer length this is this we can use for say uh, cotton or linen okay this is the linen this one we can use for worsted or cotton okay half cotton this one is for cotton or woolen system so different this is for half cotton system okay so different for different count if we want to get the yarn number for a particular count system we have to use this template okay and then according to the this, uh, size of the template we have to cut the fabric okay we may first mark the length then we can cut the fabric after cutting the fabric then we have to carefully take out the threads and another thing is that here one standard weight will be there and which is which we have to actually hang on a notch of the beam beam arm on the pointer side of the pivot so there are two sides this is side of the sample side and left side is pointer side there is a notch is there and where a standard mass is there clip type mass that we have to simply put on that and that standard mass we have to that, that is that depends on your count system so different count system we can have different mass and that when we are putting this mass this and without any material suppose a cotton system we have cut the sample and we have put the mass here so this this pointer will be lowered because it's this side it has begun it has been heavier okay then a template is used to cut a short length of yarn okay that we have to cut the fiber fabric okay short length of yarn the length depends upon the count system okay so different for different count system we have different lengths so the, this is the for different count system we can have different length then these short lengths are added one by one okay to the hook until the pointer is opposite side just exactly to the datum line so this is the thing so initially when there was no material here we have put the weight it has lowered down so after putting one it's not balanced two three gradually we are going to put we are putting the small length till it's balanced okay so for say cotton count it's if we are gradually it's balancing then we can get the the count system directly it's a count okay the count is the number of short length 
required to balance the beam. So, that means this is the counts directly we are getting when used in the analysis of small sample of fabric the rough estimation of cream has to be there. So, we must know the cream value again then only we will be able to get the actual length okay? and then we can correct it. So, this correction is important and then we can get the directly the yarn count system. So, here in this segment in this topic what we have discussed? We have discussed different count measurement system and this count measurement systems are we can have the yarn in different form. The continuous form large package form where we have enough yarn we can make a lee normally in count system we can take the lee of 120 yards and in also we have discussed for if we have smaller length of yarns available okay this may be in the form of fabric or in the form of small cut yarn sample in that case suppose we do not have the yarn 120 yarns available we have smaller length of yarn available in that case we can use this this systems of short length yarn counting system. So, knowing this yarn count we can calculate the we can calculate the total length or total mass of yarn required. So, here now this this is all about the yarn linear density measure density measurement and in next segment now we will discuss other topic we will start with the tensile testing of textile material uh, till then thank you. Thank you.